So this is the Insta360 ONE RS, which is co-engineered by Leica. How cool is that? <laughs> so I've been testing it out for the past several weeks. I took it to Colorado, took it here to the beach, and I've just been having a ton of fun with it, using it behind the scenes for some of my other YouTube videos I'm shooting here. And it really is as easy as other people make it seem. Super, super cool. So this video is sponsored by Insta360. They did send me this for free to test it out but everything in this video is gonna be my own opinions. They're not monitoring or filtering that or any way. So this is all you have to do to get set up. Tripod, feet out. Extend. Camera on. Flip it to HDR mode. Ready to go. So we'll definitely get into the other features later, but for virtual tours, this camera is pretty special. They really designed this one with user experience in mind. The touchscreen is super easy. The app is great. The build quality feels great. And I think this one's easy enough to use for literally anybody. You could get it and within the same day of receiving it, you could be doing photography, doing videography and virtual tours. They have auto options for basically everything. So auto color and all that stuff. But if you want to, you can do more manual stuff, shoot raw, shoot log video, and get more flexibility in post if you're into that. But if you're not, it's just plug and play, ready to go content. <laughs> really cool. This dual lens camera has one inch sensors on both sides, which is bigger than what most drones have for reference. It can shoot 21 megapixel raw photos, HDR up to nine brackets, which is gonna get you all the detail and color from the shadows to the highlights. And it even has horizon lock, which will auto level all your photos and videos, which is a great feature to have. For video, it can do 6K up to 30 frames per second and utilizes Insta360's flow state stabilization, which is gonna keep your footage looking really, really smooth. Like there's a little tiny drone following you around magically. <laughs> I'm still getting used to watching it back because it, honestly it's kind of trippy. Now looking at the image I think it looks nice. The audio HDR colors are nicely balanced. Probably a little bit more colorful than I typically go for but it does end up showing really really well on phone screens especially so I think that's what they're going for. It's definitely a lot more work pulling these into Photoshop and manually editing every photo, but that's definitely the way to get the best, most natural looking results. And you can even touch up the images if you want to, which will take the quality just one step further. So I think this camera ends up being kind of a mid-tier quality compared to some of the more expensive cameras I've seen from Insta360 and Matterport. But for some of the starter, more inexpensive 360 cameras, I think this one ranks up there better than most of them. And it doesn't hurt that the quality and the user experience are just really, really nice. It's an easy thing to use. You literally just have this. I can barely fit it in the frame, but you can see like this can fit into any backpack, no problem. And being so small and portable gives you a lot more options for more creative virtual tours, which is something that I think is really cool. So you can put it up on ledges where you would normally be worried about a bigger camera. You could put it like in a window view. You could put it on top of stuff, just a lot easier. And it's, weighs nothing so anybody can handle this it's not going to be too heavy you're gonna be fine so you can create these tours a few ways i went ahead and just did hdr photos that you can upload to a cloud-based host site and so for that you can just go from room to room doing your scans maybe two or three scans per room then you basically just upload them as a photo gallery to one of those sites and you can click through them and look around as you want to. But something really cool that Insta360 just announced as I'm midway through editing this video is that this camera is now going to be compatible with the 
Matterport app where you can just connect to the camera through Wi-Fi and pretty much just use this the same as you would use a Matterport camera minus the measurements and probably it's a little bit faster if Matterport is something that you want to incorporate. So make sure to let me know in the comments if you have any questions about that. I'll definitely be planning on making a video showing how to do that and we can see how that works. So let me know. So battery life, I used it all day on the slopes for video. Uh, kind of just filmed the whole run two or three times didn't seem to have an issue. I think the battery was like still above 50%. You could have a backup battery if you wanted to, but I've just got one and it was fine. I wasn't worried about it. And when I did the virtual tour of this whole two house property, plus walking areas outside, plus the front and all that stuff and filming it. So it took a little bit longer than it normally would have. Uh, the battery was just down to like 60% after all of that. So if you were doing this going from house to house, you could just have a extra battery or you could have a car charger and charge it while you're driving because it charges pretty quick. So really, really cool camera. It's super easy to use. The only thing to watch out for when you're using it is the stitch line can show up. So you do want to make sure that you prioritize where you're pointing the lens to where it's like straight towards the main focal point. Other than that, really, really great. Uh, really, really nice high quality photography and HDR stuff coming out of this, being super, super compact and super easy to use. All right, so after trying this out for a few weeks, who do I think this camera is really designed for? So I think it's really great, especially if you are doing virtual tours in situations that need to get a camera into a tight space. So obviously for real estate, super easy, but you can get more creative shots because it's so small, like on counters or in window views and stuff like that. But if you're doing, like cars or boats or destination stuff like hotels where you need to get a little more creative and get the camera into more interesting spaces. Um, it's perfect for that. It's really, really nice. I think having that amount of quality in such a small compact package is going to give you a really much more interesting virtual reality experience. So I really like it. All right. So who do I think it's not for? Um, if you need virtual, floor plans, all in one package type of situation, you're obviously gonna need to invest in something else. If you're doing action stuff, you probably wanna get their X3 model, but if you're doing behind the scenes content where you can do normal frame rates, cause this one just goes up to 30, um, this one is really, really nice for social media stuff, for behind the scenes, you can just set it up and forget it, film yourself, post some stuff on Instagram, edit it all on your phone in their app, super, super fast and easy. So if that's the type of stuff you want, I think it's a really, really cool camera and I'm really excited to get to use it more and more in my creative content as well as doing some cool photography. So big, big thanks to Insta360 for sending this out. Hopefully if you're trying to decide if you wanna buy one of these, all the sample stuff is good enough coverage to help you decide and showing it in different scenarios and different use purposes is helpful for you. So if you're new, thanks so much for tuning in and watching the video. If you're old, thanks so much for the continued support. And as always, look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Peace.